this time I'd like to call the Alexander County Board of Commissioners into session. This is the seventh day of June, 2021. And at this time, I'd like to call on Vice Chairman Ronnie Reese, who will do the invocation, followed by Commissioner Jeff Peel, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would please rise. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you at the end of this evening today, thanking you for the blessings you've given to us. Lord, I pray for each person that's traveled here. Pray for safe return to them back to their homes and places of abode. Pray for all those who protect us each day, our law enforcement, fire, rescue, EMS, um, all of those protect them, guide and direct and all that's uh, done there. Pray you protect our citizens of Alexander County. Thank you for all the good things you do for us and would be with us through this meeting that we make wise decisions that would move Alexander County forward. Thank you for all that you do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you would join me in the pledge. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Gentlemen, the first thing on the agenda is a commissioner's report. Does any commissioner have anything that they'd like to report on tonight? Yes, sir. I, I was at the uh, service at the the Memorial Day uh, service at the courthouse. It was uh, an amazing service, but the, the, there was a piece that was so striking because they weren't able to have it last year was the number of people that we've lost in two years. Uh, I don't remember now exactly what that number was. 173. I, still, I can't remember if it was 173 or 183, but 173 veterans in two years so uh, that's significant loss of some outstanding people and uh, good people but it was a, a wonderful ceremony and uh, I know everyone who was there uh, it had special meaning so I was glad I was able to be there very good anyone else Mr. Chairman I was um, and many some of you may have been there as well but um, I didn't have a child graduating this year, but my, my daughter, one, one of our daughters was a junior marshal. So we attended the ACHS graduation. And uh, we, it went well. Um, I was, you know, I was um, impressed. The principal at Alexander Central seems to have, a, um, have everything under control and um, you know, had about 240, I think, graduate in a very exciting time. Um, those of you who don't know, there was a parade afterwards that rode through town. Um, where basically, you know, kids sat on the roofs of their parents' cars with, you know, out the sunroofs <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, um, uh, last Friday night was a fun event. Very good. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, it's just going to say the same. Uh, congratulations to all the graduates from Alexander County, and I'm sure a lot of the parents are glad that uh, they've got some that's graduated. As Josh said, I didn't have any. I'm waiting on some grandkids that'll be coming through the school system to graduate. So, and along the same line, we're talking about veterans. You know, yesterday uh, was 77 years since D-Day invasion. Uh, I'm sure there was a lot of a lot of death, a lot of things going on, but you know, that's why we can have the freedoms for our kids to graduate from school, freedoms that we can come here. You know, I thank all the veterans, any veteran who's here in this audience, my hat's off to you. I thank you for your service. Thank you for those listening. You know, let's never forget the price that was paid for what we have today. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I will make uh, mention that uh, graduation did occur there's a portion of those students that are going to be going off to colleges, whether local or abroad. There's also a, a, a large portion that's going to be staying home and going into trades or manufacturing or whatnot. So it's a it'd be a great opportunity for those that are staying and for our local businesses to reach out to uh, try to grab some of that new uh, workforce that's coming into the area. Mm. Um, on the Saturday night, I, believe it was, I attended the uh, uh, 
program that they had in the basement of the uh, table of savings along that was put on was very well uh, uh, done and a lot of good music and it's uh, it was a pleasure to see those young people performing recognizing the veterans and those who had given the ultimate sacrifice uh, a very good concert and uh, we appreciate what they are they're doing and uh, we appreciate everything that the veterans have done those who made the ultimate sacrifice to let us be where we are today and to provide us with the freedoms that we all sometimes take for granted and sometimes we forget what the sacrifices that those people made in making sure that uh, we have what we have today and those folks who suffered the most that lost their lives but their families suffered a tremendous amount of loss when they lost someone in the wars that have preceded us to this day so to them to the families and to the military personnel we appreciate what you've done and thank you for the sacrifices that you make for this country that's that's a that's an ultimate sacrifice that people make and uh, want to be honored and respected so thank you Chair, chairman Yoder, if, I, if i could please uh 2000 i don't know seven or eight maybe somewhere in there i, I was on the the vetcom committee and we had an initiative with the high school where we did documentaries on those stories. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure where they're housed at now, if they're at the library or if they're at Vetcom or if they're at the school or wherever, but uh, there are some amazing stories that we've captured from some of these guys, uh, some of them World War II, some Korea, um, and uh, Vietnam, all the way through, but uh, some amazing stories from first-hand perspective. If, uh, anyone's ever interested they are uh, very well done and they will give you a whole new perspective on things that people have done so that we can have what we have and just to add to that I think whenever this took place the VA did that along with the uh, Alexander County uh, tech personnel there when they were doing those recordings and interviewed them and uh, it's one of the few times that you'd ever heard any of our rural world World War II veterans speak out and talk about what actually happened to them when they were in combat. And uh, it's very, very interesting. It's very touching if you get a chance to listen to it. YouTube.com slash Alexander County NC. Thank you, sir. So you can find those on YouTube, and it'd be very interesting to go back and take a look at those. Some very, very good stories. Very good stories there that uh, these these folks went through. Gentlemen, you have the agenda before you tonight. Uh, I'd entertain a motion to approve the agenda as is. Make a motion to approve the agenda as given. Second. Motion is made. Second. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor indicate raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise. The motion carries. Madam Clerk, I believe on item number one, we do not have anyone signed up for public comment. All right. Thank you. Item number two, public hearing, rezoning case 21-2, uh, Royal Comfort Properties. Uh, Seth Harris, the zoning administrator. At this time, gentlemen, I'd entertain a motion to go uh, for a public hearing. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we open a public hearing pertaining to the rezoning case 21-2 for RCSI Properties Incorporated. Do we have a second? Second. second. Motion is made. Second. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor indicate raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise. The motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Harris. Thank you, sir. This is rezoning case 21-2. The applicant and property owner is RCSI Properties, also known as Royal Comfort Seating. Current zoning district is RA20 Residential Agricultural. Proposed zoning district is LI Light Industrial. The current land use is vacant and the proposed use is manufacturing and storage. This is located on Aspal Dam Road consisting of 10.45 acres. Land uses within 100 feet include to the north industrial property currently occupied by Real Comfort Seating. To the south is residential and agricultural property. To the east is vacant property and residential property and then to the west is also residential property. All surrounding zoning districts are RA20, except for that property to the north, which is light industrial. So again, the applicant has applied to rezone 10.45 acres from RA20 to LI light industrial. 
in order to construct a 37,500 square foot building for manufacturing and storage. Manufacturing and storage are allowable uses in the LI zoning district. So the 2008 Alexander County Comprehensive Plan Future Land Use Map shows this area of the county as being commercial in nature. While not consistent with the map, it is within the intent of the comprehensive plan to expand industrial uses in those areas where they existed at the time the plan was adopted. The request is also consistent with the neighboring industrial use. Please note that all the uses allowed in LI district should be considered, not only the use for which the applicant is applying. Per our usual practice, letters were sent by first class mail to property owners <coughs> within 100 feet and a sign was posted on the property and a notice was put in the paper. Staff does recommend approval of the request based on being consistent with the intent of the 2008 Alexander County Comprehensive Plan. And on May 6th, the Planning and Zoning Commission met and they unanimously recommended approval of the request due to the same reason, uh, being consistent with the intent of the 2008 Comprehensive Plan and compatible with adjacent uses. We have some maps here and a site plan and the applicants are here with a more detailed site plan if you have more questions about that. Any questions for staff? Not at this time, I don't believe. Is anyone, would you gentlemen like to speak? Okay. Okay. All right. Does anyone have any questions or concerns? Okay. Will there be anybody from the audience that would like to speak? I'm excited that you're building a building. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, there being no uh, uh, one from the audience that would like to speak, uh, at this time I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Make a motion to close the public hearing on rezoning case 21-2. Entertain a second. Second. Motion is made and second. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor of closing the public hearing, indicate raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise. The motion carries. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, I'd entertain a motion at this time. Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion that we approve rezoning case 21-2 based on the request being consistent with the intent of the 2008 comprehensive plan and its compatibility with adjacent uses. Thank you. Second. Motion is made and second. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor indicate raising your <coughs> right hand. Those opposed, there's a motion carries unanimously. Thank you, gentlemen. We look forward to your expansion. Love Thank to see you. that happen in Alexander County. Go get Especially em. with local people doing it. Em. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Item number three, Alexander County Broadband Project Update. Nick Stewart. Oh, David Moose is going to do this. Very good, sir. David? Thank, Thank you. you. We're going to tag team it. Uh, so we want to bring the board a uh, brief update about the broadband expansion project here in Alexander County. Uh, this has been going on for just a little while now. Uh, we met, staff met on uh, May 14th with uh, open broadband staff and discussed the progress of the project. Um, the work for phase one, as you might recall, we've broken the project up into two phases. Uh, the work for phase one is progressing. We have had a few delays. Uh, primarily that has been uh, slow negotiations for a lease uh, for a tower site on Moore Mountain, but there is progress moving forward on that. Um, Open Broadband also uh, has added three new hub sites, actually four. Um, at the end of this week, there's another one going online. So uh, they've added three new hub sites um, that are currently online, one in Rocky Face uh, Baptist Church area, one in the Fairview Baptist Church area, and a uh, residential hub off of Rocky Springs Road, I believe it is. Yeah, Rocky Springs Road. Um, open broadband staff have also uh, modified the distribution, the proposed distribution of equipment. Uh, originally in the plan, uh, they were going to add uh, quite a bit of equipment to the uh, Lenny's Mount or the yeah, Lenny's Mountain Tower. Um, they've proposed to spread a little bit of that equipment out to some other tower sites to provide better coverage and just a little bit less uh, loading on the Lenny's Tower. Um, Phase two is in still in final development stages. There are several tower sites that are being considered. These uh, phase two would provide service to the eastern and southeastern portion of the county. 
that area has been kind of a challenge because there's not a lot of, uh, they're telling us there's not a lot of commercial tower sites available that are affordable uh, to, to negotiate leases with. So they're trying to get creative and, and currently working on uh, trying to locate some tower sites for that area. What, what's the qualifications for a tower site? <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Commissioner, for the question. Um, essentially, we're looking for something that is um, elevated above the trees. Uh, we need to have line of sight from that tower to uh, a number of residents. Um, we like to make sure that there's at least 20 to 50 or so residents uh, that can be served by a vertical asset. That way we can make sure that the investment of equipment that we place on that tower is justified by uh, the number of residents that will get connected. That's a real challenge in the southeastern part of the county, getting an elevated spot, isn't it? It is, sir. But uh, like David mentioned, we're trying to get creative and uh, got a couple solutions up my sleeve that we're, uh, we're cooking up now. How, how high can a tower itself go to compensate the lack of elevation? Uh, some towers that I've interacted with are up to 300 feet. Um, I don't know if there are any of that high uh, or even required in the county for that, but um, about 150 feet is the usual um, height that we look for. Thank you. Sir. And I apologize, I didn't inter introduce Nick. Uh, this is Nick Stewart, he's with Open Broadband. He's a, a recently hired as the area manager for Western North Carolina, so he's kind of taking lead on this project uh, moving forward. And uh, they, all their staff has been great to work with. Um, Currently, they have about 150 total customers on open broadband service. Now that's a cumulative uh, number from the pilot program moving forward. Uh, they don't have the data broken out from the pilot program versus the expansion we're doing now, but uh, they're about 150 and a little over 50% of those are considered unserved. Uh, so that was our target um, demographic, if you would say, uh, to try to get internet to those who didn't have any other options. Um, and a lot of times it, the challenge is that uh, fiber optic cable is expensive to run and there's not a lot of companies that have a lot of um, interest in doing that in rural areas that are sparsely populated. So uh, companies like Open Broadband that come in with wireless solutions are able to fill that gap. Um, one other thing I wanted to share is, um, I brought a little graphic with us. There are some uh, staff from Open Broadband that are in the area. They're going out and testing areas uh, where they suspect they have service and then they are notifying uh, people, homes who may be potential customers. And so uh, citizens may notice a door hanger similar to this on their door. Uh, it gives very detailed instructions about whether or not they are eligible for service um, be, to be served by Open Broadband and gives them instructions about how to contact the company to initiate service if they wish to. So just want the citizens to be aware there are contractors in the area that are working for Open Broadband uh, and you may see those door hangers on your door. And with that, we'll entertain any additional questions the board may have. Are, are the vehicles, these folks that are going out, are the vehicles well marked? Well, most of them are. That was one concern that was brought up. I think, um, I think one particular person um, called into the sheriff's office uh, and was suspicious, which is uh, perfectly acceptable. Uh, I mean, we encourage that uh, to be suspicious of people because there are people out you know, doing fraudulent things. But um, we spoke with Open Broadband. They are working on getting door magnets for all of their vehicles. Um, so if that's not in place quite yet, it will be very soon. So they should be marked, uh, and, and all their staff are, uh, have been instructed to identify themselves as uh, being with them. And also, will they have a, a shirt on that says who they are? I mean, I hate to ask so many yes, questions, sir. but I, I just about guarantee that there'll be people calling like, well, that car's here, but I don't see his name on there, and they'd like to see that it is who they say they are. Yes, sir, absolutely. So we only have one vehicle currently that doesn't have vehicle magnets on it, and we're resolving uh, that issue for that employee now. Um, as far as uh, shirts, that's something that we can also make sure that we do, either shirts or lanyards. Yes. Well, yes, sir. We good. Yeah. I just wanted to take a moment, uh, if that's okay, to introduce myself as well. Um, I'm the new area manager for this part of North Carolina. Um, also new to the state, but not new to the industry. Uh, I've been working in wireless internet uh, space for about seven years now uh, in Maryland and um, Africa and uh, here in North Carolina now. So uh, look forward to uh, getting a lot of people in your community connected and I've enjoyed um, spending time up here. I'm, uh, I live in Charlotte, but I'm usually here two or three days a week. So I've uh, enjoyed being up uh, this part.
Um, enjoyed Rocky Face. Uh, looking forward to taking my wife out there one day to go hiking, but um, beautiful county that you guys have here. Welcome to North Carolina. Thank you. Well, you know, Maryland, Africa, and Alexander County are a lot alike. They are. Lots of yeah. mountains, lots of trees, lots of uh, <laughs> things to navigate, yeah. uh, creative solutions to get people connected. And so. I really like the term you used, vertical asset. Yes, sir. Yeah. So that, that sounded very... Um, very good. Windmill, right. water tank, you tower, know, vertical steeple, asset sound, sound if it's sounds tall. very professional and um, yes, sir. and even you know Hollywood esque. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I got a few questions real quick. Uh, yes, sir. Not sure which one to answer, but are we are we bouncing for folks that have been uh, turned down and for signal quality? I would assume. Um, are we bouncing any signals from the main pods? to those locations or have the ability or not or so if someone is not currently eligible to receive service we do take a look around them and say uh, what res what uh, residents or businesses are near you that might be able to serve you the issue that we run into is if your house is completely surrounded by trees and you can't see anyone um, that's uh, going to be a tough one for us to, to navigate but um, in addition, as we add extra hubs and continue moving through phases, uh, we take a look at those addresses before. Our goal is to get as many people connected as possible, especially if we know they want our service because they've reached out to us. So it's tough when we tell them we can't yet get them connected, but we're always uh, double checking and verifying. Is there a possibility if someone's uh, uh, been turned down the service because of the the signal quality or whatnot and the new sites are going up should they reapply or not they can't they're more than welcome the overlapping to overlapping areas possibly they're more than welcome to um, what I've done over the past couple of months is if someone has requested service and I found that we couldn't get them connected uh, because their signal strength wasn't strong enough mm -hmm. uh, once we've put up sites like uh, Rocky Face Baptist Church for example I've had those houses gone out and retested uh, and we've had uh, two or three even last week who weren't uh, able to receive service before who are now uh, connected. Uh, one more question. Yes, sir. Uh, now I'm full of them right now. But, uh, as far as um, do we have a backlog of installs waiting to happen? We do. Um, so typically I'll schedule uh, installs about a week out. Uh, I know that we have two confirmed on Thursday uh, and... Uh, new hub with two or three other residents that will be fed on it Thursday and Friday that we're playing with. One of those installs was pushed from last week. Uh, the customer had wasps nests that they're spraying for. So once that gets sorted, we'll get them connected. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Any other questions? We're good. Glad to have you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Keep working. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Item number four on the agenda tonight. Alexander County 2021-2022 Budget Ordinance, Mr. Rick French, County Manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In your packets, you have a copy of the 2021-22 Budget Ordinance for Alexander County. Uh, the information and numbers follow the public meetings and hearings that we've had. Um, there are three uh, fee increases, uh, one involving water rates going up 3%. Uh, increase in both C and D and MSW at the at, at is proposed for landfill and fee changes are recommended from EMS management and consultants uh, as we discussed at our public meetings. Um, I think everything else is, I'll say normal, but it runs along the similar lines as in the past, but this is our, our budget ordinance for next fiscal year. So we can try to answer any questions. Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. French. If you don't mind, the total budget for this year versus the total budget for last year, if you just let the folks know what that was. It's 45 nine, 45 million nine. And last year was right at uh, 43 million. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, does anybody have any questions? If not, I entertain a motion to approve the 2021-2022 budget ordinance for Alexander County. 
make a motion to approve the 2021-2022 budget ordinance for Alexander County as given in our report. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and second. Is there any further discussion at this time? If not, all those in favor indicate by raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise. Thank you very much. And Ms. French, I want to say to the staff and to everyone involved in doing this budget this year, I, I do appreciate the work that's going into it because there's a lot of different things that were coming to play in this budget. And uh, the fact that, yes, we have some things that did go up, you know, and even though those are not a property tax, they're still basically a tax. But we had no property tax increase in Alexander County this year, and our county continues to remain in good financial standing and the staff and uh, this board has done a very good job of making sure that uh, there was no tax increase and for that uh, I want to say thank you very much sir thank you uh, item number five county sales tax revenue for 2021 uh, 2020 and 2021 budget year mr. French county manager thank you again mr. chairman uh, as we've been talking about with the sales tax reports uh, regular sales taxes are running ahead of schedule um, so far in this fiscal year and which which is we, you know our sales taxes run behind a few months um, so through the end of February we have collected four million six hundred and nine thousand uh, dollars we budgeted four million nine hundred and twenty five thousand uh, dollars we've collected almost 94 percent of the budget through 75 percent of the year um, that's a almost 19 percent increase over last year uh, the new sales tax is running a little differently um, but that's more by design uh, so far this fiscal year we've collected one million <coughs> excuse me one million two hundred sixty seven thousand dollars that's 86 percent uh, of the budget uh, collection which again we're 75 percent we budgeted 1,486,000 uh, it's a almost 4 percent increase over last year but we'll take that too so absolutely I'll yeah. be glad to answer any questions about sales taxes mr. chairman and board. Okay. well thank you mr. French we appreciate the report sir yes sir Item number five uh, excuse me item number six on the agenda board appointments and reappointments Mr. French, County Manager. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Um, appointments, Historic Preservation Committee reappoint Helen Chestnut and Lee Sharp for three years. <coughs> CVCC Board of Trustees reappoint John Watts for four years. Juvenile Crime Prevention Council appoint Kathy Riddle, Jason Hughes, Ashley Moretz for two years. Reappoint Chris Bowman, Krista Hyatt, and Ronnie Reese for two years. And appoint Ethan Grant, our review officer and once you make that motion we also need to approve the accompanying resolution um, that designates him the review officer very good sir thank you yes sir gentlemen I entertain a motion to approve make a motion that we approve the uh, appointments as stated motions made uh, have a second second motions made second any discussion there being none, all those in favor indicate by raising your hand. All opposed, likewise. The motion carries. And at this time, gentlemen, I'm going to read the resolution uh, in, uh, uh, in, in the form of a motion. Resolution requesting the Alexander County Board of Commissioners to appoint a review officer for Alexander County. Whereas SL 1997-309, paragraph S875, made a, significant, made a number of significant changes in the procedures for recording maps and plats and whereas the main purpose of the law is to transfer the responsibility for reviewing plats to determine whether they meet recording requirements from the register of deeds to the review officer and whereas under general statute 47-30.2 requires the board of county commissioners in each county by resolution to appoint a person or persons to serve as revenue officer as review officer to review each plat before it is recorded and certified that it meets the North Carolina statutory requirements for recording and whereas it is the desire of the Alexander County Com Board of Commissioners to ensure review of all maps and plats as required by GS 
General Statutes 47-30.2 before they are presented to the Register of Deeds for recording. Now therefore be it resolved that the Alexander County Board of Commissioners does hereby appoint Ethan Grant to perform all responsibilities of re as required for the review officer under appropriate North Carolina General Statutes for the Alexander County Planning Area. Adopted this the seventh day of June, 2021, and I'll make that in the form of a motion. Second. Motion is made and second. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor indicate by raising your right hand. Those opposed likewise, the motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Item number seven, budget ordinance amendments number 83 through number 87 and grant project budget ordinance P-3, <coughs> Mr. Rick French, County Manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, I want to mention that in your package you have the grant project uh, budget ordinance for the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021. The copy in your packet uh, has been changed and you have a new uh, copy. Uh, and the new copy has uh, the American Rescue Plan funds to be used 100% for water infrastructure expenses. And that's in line with the legislation that's going on. So we'll, we'll talk more about that, but that's where we'll, we'll, we're asking you to start is at that point. Um, and I'll be glad to answer questions about that. Um, we also have four, we have uh, several budget amendments, 83 through 87. Uh, budget, 80, budget amendment 83 is to budget for payouts of vacation, holiday, comp time through May of 2021 for employees leaving during the 2021 year. 84 is to increase the EMS budget for estimated administrative fee to be paid to the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners for the annual Medicaid cost report and to increase the contingency and reduce fund balance appropriated based on the sales tax revenue projections for the rest of the, the budget year. Budget amendment number 85 is the budget for transfer of article 44, the new the uh, sales tax funds for the general fund to uh, county water and sewer fund to pay debt service for the water project uh, and debt service began in May of 2021. And that's for our new water project. Uh, a portion of this article, sales taxes, sales taxes were received in a prior year, prior year and represented by fund balance appropriation for this budget amendment. Um, budget amendment number 86. Um, work is to budget for DSS representative uh, pay fund, which is a social security program where the county DSS receives and manages money for minor children and certain adults. The receipts and disbursements were previously accounted for in another fund type um, that did not require an annual budget due to a change in national <coughs> county standards. The money must be budgeted and accounted for in either the general fund or special revenue fund. At this time, the county has chosen the budget for the DSS representative uh, payee funds and the general fund. And number 87 is to budget for the fines or forfeitures received by the county, which are required to be remitted to the local board of education. And I'll be glad to answer any questions about the budget amendments or the project amendment, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Gentlemen, does anyone have any questions? Mr. French, just a question on number 86. That $196,000, that comes from somewhere else, and we're just accounting for it. That's right. Correct? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I just want to make that clear. That that money has been sent to us from other sources. and That's we so Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Purely an accounting thing. It is. At this time, gentlemen, I'd entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve budget ordinance amendments 83 through 87 mm -hmm. uh, as stated by county manager. In the, the grant project? In the grant, yeah, ordinance and the grant P3. project. P3. Ordinance. P3. That grant project budget ordinance P3. Uh, the motion has been made. Uh, is there a second? Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor indicate by raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise. The motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Item number 
Eight on the agenda, other business, county manager's report, Mr. French. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a couple things to mention in your packet. You have some information about the news about volume mental health and Cardinals Innovations, the merging of those two uh, entities, LME MCOs. Uh, at this time, it appears that 14 counties from Cardinals or Cardinal are going to join Valles, 22 counties. Uh, this is going to take some time to work work through this, uh, but the merger the merger will actually take place in July 1st of 2022. Um, also, you have two house bills in your packet. Oh, well, have you have one in your packet and one that we gave to you, passed out to you. Uh, one is for the broadband uh, program that's being set up by the state, and the other <coughs> is something that we talked about at our last meeting which is uh, a bill for uh, to create a state building code permit te technician certification for employees that work in building inspections. Um, also, we, this week we had our meeting with Lael Builders, uh, no relations to Josh, uh, starting soon at Courthouse Park. Uh, that project will take approximately 120 days to complete. And that's all I have. Mr. Chairman, I have some things for closed session, though. Very good, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Any Strange, questions? Question. Go ahead. No, sir, you go ahead. You first. On the courthouse park, what is the groundbreaking day? We don't have it set yet. Okay. Mr. French, with Via Health and Cardinal Innovations, um, it, uh, I, I know it's n nobody's fault at the table, but it really seems like there's a big transformation every year or every two years. and. How, how does the state expect people to get set in any kind of consistency when this happens so often? That's a great question. I don't really know they the don't. answer to that. I've been involved with it for some time. Um, I think it makes it confusing, but um, under the circumstances, what's happened over the years is at one time there were over 30 LME MCOs, and now they'll, after this there'll be five. That are uh, any more efficient than we was when we were thirty. I, I, I think so, but uh, one thing the state has allowed to happen is for counties to pull out and you know want to join someone else, and that causes disruptions in that in the telling the MCO. And for example, in Cardinal, um, Mecklenburg County pulled out, uh, Forsyth County pulled out. And they joined e other LME MCOs, which caused a ripple effect. And so five, I think five counties, maybe six, actually went other places, which caused Cardinal to, I mean, they eventually, um, I'll say, will merge with Via. That's the best way to say it. So, um, and we've asked the state on numerous occasions to have a different process so that this can't so. I'll say so easily pull out. There's re everybody has their reasons, but a lot of times it, it doesn't seem, um, I'll say, as responsible as it should be because it's confusing the clients, the consumers, and the family members. It's very confusing to them. They don't know. They, you know, I won't say they don't know what's going on, but it does make it confusing for them. Well, then it just upheavals it the does. whole DSS department as well. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you can't get any solid. It's like you're in quicksand all the time, and, yeah. and you almost start, stop sinking, and then you get thrown in more quicksand. I, I recently attended. Uh, Via has a seat has several CFACs, which are the consumer and family member advisory committees, and a couple times a year, all three of those groups get together, and there was a lot of concern from members about what's going on especially now um, you know this it's not only the merger part of it, there's just so many other parts of this um, that makes it difficult for for um, those consumers and those clients to understand the programs that are being offered to them yeah, the service to the person who needs it gets lost in all the conglomeration of mess it also puts a lot of pressure on our DSS's and our health departments um, and, it, and it's just something we have to do a better job at, at educating people on what they need to do. Um, so, anyway. 
Thank you. Yes, sir. That's one of the, that's one of the big drawbacks on mental health, trying to get help. Is nobody really knows where to go or what to do anymore. Right. And it's been this way for like 14 years, it seems like, or longer. Well, it's, it's continuously it's sort of been at different stages, and yeah. you're, but you're right, Mr. Well, Chairman, you're right. It's been something all along. It has. Uh, anybody else have any questions? Uh, the consent agenda. I can say it now. Make a motion to approve consent agenda as given in our packet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Do we have a second? Second. Motion is made and second. Uh, to approve the consent agenda. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor indicate raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise. The motion carries. Uh, at this time, uh, we will go into adjournment and go into a closed session under North Carolina General Statutes 143-318.11, paragraph A, subsection 4, 5, and 6, economic development, contractual, and personnel. We will re-adjourn for the primary purpose of adjournment only, and we will not be taking any action whatsoever. Thank you. <coughs> I understand a motion to go into Mr. closed Jim, session. I'll make a motion we go into closed session. Motion is made. Is there a second? Third. All in favor. All in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you.